Thank you, Zaza Ndovu, for accepting to be interviewed by Minapedia. I'm Telecom Pande, and I'm the Junior Communications Officer for the, um, the organization. I just wanted to ask some questions related to your um, career as a scientist that may not be showcasing the different bios of the different websites um, you feature. So I know you conducted your PhD and doctoral studies at Johns Hopkins. I wanted to know um, more about what influenced you to go to Johns Hopkins and what influenced you to actually join the lab you did your PhD studies. In. All right, uh, thank you for the opportunity to um, talk to you uh, today. So yeah, my name is Zaza Ndlovu. Um, I'm from Zambia, so I did all my uh, undergrad uh, studies in Zambia. And then uh, I was working at the University Teaching Hospital in Lusaka, Zambia. Um, and then uh, with a group from Johns Hopkins that uh, they were conducting research in, in Lusaka. And then uh, they told me about opportunities to do graduate studies in the US. And they warned me that it was extremely competitive, but they thought that I was, um, talented enough to, to, to make it. And so they said, if I was interested, I should start making preparations to be able to go into graduate studies. So for somebody that has been trained in Africa to get into uh, the US university for graduate studies, first of all, you have to show competence in English. You also have to pass the GRE exam. So that's a graduate entry exams. And so they're very, very competitive. So I worked on that and took the exam and did well. And before I traveled, I also started to organize some of the work that I was doing in Osaka and published a paper that helped a lot in getting admitted into the master's program at Johns Hopkins School of Public Health in, in Baltimore, Maryland. So I moved to the US in 2002. And uh, 2003, I started my master's degree in molecular microbiology and immunology. And then uh, I did very well, so I was uh, elevated to a PhD. So I went on to do my PhD there in, in Baltimore. Um, That's a very good overview. Um, it's really interesting that you highlighted that sometimes it's a challenge for people to go from um, researching in some countries. I know South Africa might be an exception, but um, in other sub-Saharan countries, it's quite hard to transition from doing the research in the countries and going to America. So that's really great. Over you, after you finished your PhD, you went on to conduct um, a postdoctoral studies at Harvard. Um, and ironically, this week is postdoctoral appreciation week. And sometimes <laughs> we may forget, um, especially when you become like a senior PI, um, how hard or how enjoyable postdoc was. So I wanted to know um, a bit about the challenges and strengths you experienced transitioning from a postdoc to a principal investigator. Yes, so um, after I finished my PhD at, at Hopkins, I always wanted to come back to Africa. So I was looking for labs that had links with Africa. Mm -hmm. And so I came across the lab of uh, uh, Dr. Bruce Walker, who was a T cell immunologist working on HIV, and they had strong links with a group in South Africa at the University of KwaZulu Natal. And so I was interested in T cell immunology, first of all, and I also was interested in that connection with Africa. So that's why I chose to join his, his lab at, at, at Harvard. So I moved from Baltimore to Boston and I started working there on uh, uh, the HIV elite controller cohort and trying to understand T cell immunology and how that uh, affects. Uh, contributes to uh, natural suppression of HIV. And then from then on, after I finished my postdoctoral fellowship, I was uh, promoted to a junior faculty position at Harvard. And then I chose to come and set up my lab in Africa. And so I had that opportunity and they already had the facility at the University of KwaZulu Natal that they helped build and uh, uh, capacitate. So they had the equipment, they had the infrastructure for me to be able to come and set up my lab. So I moved back to Africa um, in 2012, I think. Yeah, So it's great that you moved back um, to conduct research in Africa. So when we talk to, well, when I've interviewed uh, a few scientists who have transitioned from 
um, doing their graduate studies and their postdoctoral training in America, then moving to different institutes in Africa, they do um, highlight some challenges. For example, they say like, in America, you'd get a reagent in like two days. But in some countries that can actually extend to like two months and that can negatively impact the pace at which you conduct your research. So I wanted to know um, what challenges and benefits do you think you have experienced doing your research in South Africa that you may not have experienced while you're in America? Um, so yeah, so w one of the challenges of, of course, the, the obvious challenge of reagents is, is, is common to everyone. Uh, but m my own unique challenge when I first moved to South Africa is that uh, I was looking to build my, my group. So I was looking, recruiting students. And initially I was looking for students that had an immunology background. And I looked very hard and wide and did not find a single student that had any prior experience in immunology. So that was kind of a wake up call. Then I re-strategized and just decided to hire anybody that was really smart and I was going to train them. And that's what I did. Uh, it took a little bit of a time to you know the learning curve, uh, but mm -hmm. it turned out to very fine. Most of my students excelled after they started working with me. And thank you for also highlighting the challenge with the immunology training. Because um, most of the, um, undergraduate studies on bio, biochemistry and microbiology, and there's not much emphasis in immunology. And most of us have to learn while doing our masters without the formal, actual, written class, immunology classes, and it's more ad hoc. So thank you for highlighting that. 